Greetings, brethren. Uh, today we'll be looking at uh, this individual named Andy. He's from the UK. He's a universalist. You know, um, universalist is the doctrine which is called uh, universal reconciliation that after the compensation, consummation of the ages, um, after the the purify that uh, the lost will be purified in the fires of hell, that all be reconciled to God. Now he says some alarming things. Um, I would like to say plasmas, but uh, I don't know if that's the definition of the word to be called that. But uh, it's alarming words. It's pretty, pretty unfortunate, really, the road that he's going down. <clears throat> that, uh, like, uh, in the previous um, line of events, that he said that he was struggling with his faith. Well, he was a universalist for years before this, but uh, he seemed like he went back to it. Now, I want to show, go through the things that he said and to show that really, um, he doesn't have the correct interpretation and these things are not true. Now, <clears throat> he thinks I'll be reconciled, even Satan, that uh, he's fallen like all the rest of God's creation. So just like we have a chance, uh, Satan was going to have a chance to be reconciled. Um, he has like an infinity for Satan. Not that he, he says he claims he doesn't worship Satan, but he... Uh, he sympathizes with Satan because Satan is one of uh, God's creation. So he sympathizes with Satan. But he claims not to worship. But here in the past, he you can see that he sympathizes with Satan. There was all kinds of things that came against them. Right. So for Satan had no free will either, like Cyrus. Okay. For all Satan. All right, um, go to here that, um, let's go to one of his videos here and let's take a look. Forgive Satan for what he's done. Forgive the fallen angels as well for what they've done. Pray for our enemies. So he claims just because, um, Let's go here. That he, uh, the scripture says that we're supposed to bless our enemies and pray for them. And, you know, that includes that uh, Satan is the ultimate enemy. So we should pray and forgive him also. But what it is, he's the, the enemy to God. Um, but what is this really saying? What is this really saying? We are not to forgive Satan because he's already judged. There's nothing really to forgive. God's not going to forgive him. He's not going to absolve this. Although as much as Andy, this Andy from the UK, wants to say that Satan will be reconciled after purifier, purifying fires of hell, at the conversation at the end of ages of ages that he will too be reconciled as as well you know as well with the rest of creation so what is it really saying no we're not he's god's enemy he's our enemy that we should beware and to um be on guard to his schemes you know these deceptions so what is it really saying, including this exception that he's not really a bad guy? He's not, he didn't really do no wrong. He, you know, that's one of the deceptions. <clears throat> so what is this really saying? So this comes from Matthew 22, 37, 40. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love. So, um, okay, I got the wrong page here. So what is this saying? This comes from Matthew 5, 43, 48. You have heard that hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. 
So what is saying here? I'm not saying angels, but your neighbor, your neighbor, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, which is not your neighbor. So it's talking about people so far. But I say unto love your enemies, those who are not your neighbors or your brethren, but them that bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he make the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For you love them which only love you. What word would you, do you have? Don't. Uh, what word have ye? Do not even publicans do the same? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if you salute the, your brethren only, so brethren only, what do they look more than others? Do not even the publicans or the lost people, the publicans, the, the um, you know, the pub, you know, the officials, before they're perfect, even as your father, which is heaven, is perfect. So, is you have to also say in the verse forty-seven that. You, is saying, do not only salute your brother, but salute your enemies. So you have to salute or say hello, talk to Satan himself. But no, it says the commandment is to love thy neighbor. But you have heard it's been said, the commandment to love your neighbor. Um, love God with your whole mind, soul, strength, and um Heart. Um, love God and love thy neighbor. So you haven't heard it been said in the old time, which was not, it was just added that you shall hate your enemy or that um, your enemy is eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You have heard it been said, but no longer. Either of those interpretations that they added or talking about something else. But it's contrasting people here. Contrasting people, the neighbors and your enemies, which are not your neighbor or your brother. Because it's saying to, it's um, making an argument here that they were only saluting, it's saying hello to their brother only. But it's saying, do not only salute or greet your Brethren only, but your enemies. And we see you that who is your enemies? Those who persecute you, those who persecute Christ is your enemies. Matthew 5, 11, 12. Blessed are ye which men, men shall revile you. So this is talking about humans, not uh, fallen angels, which men revile you and persecute you shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecute they the prophets which were before you. So, um, yeah, We're not to, you know, love evil things, but uh, forgiveness. So uh, Satan has no forgiveness, really, because he's already judged. Because the prince of the world is judged, he's judged already. He was, the sentence is already passed. You cannot change it. Because him and his fallen angels, which deceived well, him, the Steve mankind, his ultimate uh you know, crime, the ultimate crime, because he uh, perverted and brought the death um, upon God's creation, which was originally made to be good. So he made the ultimate crime against God. So him is already judged, and he did not spare also his angels. So God not spare his angels. So this is, you know, a single sentence. For God did not spare his angels that sin, but cast them in down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness reserved unto judgment. 
So this hill is not just like, well, it's a fine fire, it purifies, it burns off the sin. But you deliver them in chains of darkness, darkness, but imprisonment. So our darkness, outer darkness, which is imprisonment. So they're imprisoned to reserve to judgment. Held captive. So no, you, Satan does not have forgiveness. He will not be reconciled. And loving your enemies is human enemies, not the ultimate enemy. So let's go to um, uh, next clip. God loves his creation, then we ought to love his creation as well. Uh, Satan is a creation of God, therefore we love Satan. It's a good thing, I think, to uh, forgive uh, Satan for what he's uh, done to humanity, God's creation. So he's telling people to forgive Satan, which Satan has not afforded any forgiveness. He has signed a judgment no matter how he, you know, he has emotional hang-up. Uh, as far as he uh, revealed about his past, he has emotional hang-ups about the idea of hell, that God is good, so God cannot uh, torment because it goes against his righteous good, meant that to really it's not like God to do that. So he does not believe in hell, or Sometimes that gets in the way of his actual faith here. But or should, should we love evil? You know, we love wicked people, yes, in, in a sense, in a fatherly love, like that, just like God has that you know, fatherly love that he wants the best for them, you know, like he sees us. He or sees lost his lost creation. He wishes the best, but he does not approve of what they do. But we are not to um, love evil or the embodiment of evil, because that, that gets you into some dangerous. That we should sympathize for Satan, and you know. That, that, that's just, uh, you know, Satanist, Satanist uh, you know, ideology, you know, the, what they try to deceive you into thinking that Satan is not such a bad guy. He's just a, mis he's just a misunderstood, mixed up kid. He's just a misunderstood. He's misunderstood, you know. We should sympathize. We should um, wish that he, Satan would repent and, you know, be saved too or something or be reconciled back to God but if not he's our enemy he we should be you know we should be on guard that you know he's trying to act friendly to catch us on guard to draw uh, draw us to himself that's that's his scheme So we are to love our neighbor. So that's that's what we're talking about. We love our neighbor, love our enemies, but these are human enemies, not God's enemy. Um, we are to love our neighbor as ourself or our enemy or townspeople who show love but not for evil we should not love satan but love god i mean he's the god of this world so that would be idolatry idol idolatry because he's god of this world we love something i mean not he does he doesn't claim to worship but loving you know another godlike figure is an idolatry you know It's one of the Ten Commandments.
It says, Thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind and strength. This first great commandment, Jesus says, says Second is like unto love thy neighbor. All these, on these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. So, where is the commandment to love Satan? I mean, we should love our enemies, but it's not talking about loving God's enemy. We should, our enemies, just those who persecute us or we do not have peace with them. But we should love, uh, hate evil. We're not the, he's the body of an evil. He, everything about him is evil. He's a murderer. We do not love murderers. You know, love be without dissimulation, or abhor which is evil, cleave unto what which is good. Abhor. Abhor means heat, which is evil. And I think in the psalmist, David says, I hate every evil way. The psalmist says, David, the psalmist, he says, I hate every evil way. We are told to abhor evil. Satan is evil. He is trying to, you know, we have to be wiser. Um, why is the serpent peaceful as doves? Well, we abhor evil. And why we should abhor evil? Because the Lord hates evil. He loves with a father, he loves those who do evil. Yeah, uh, a love that would, you know, would do anything for his children. Um, well, that's not his children, but he, uh, a love his creation to do the best. But a father, you love when, the, when you mess up, your father will punish you. So you have judgment, you have love and judgment. You cannot have it, they, they're both the. There are two sides of the same coin. You cannot have one without the other. Because if you love your children, you will keep them from getting hurt from the evil outside. So evil has to be, you have to do something with evil. Can't leave it, go and have full reign, range and full reign. You know, let your, let your children be babysat by a murderer or by a pedophile or would you not choose that murderer or pedophile likely you know he he has uh, the pedophile just got done you know you know already committing you know how it is like oh or let, let you or put your baby down into the snake pit because the serpent the snake is a pretty good babysitter. He, he's a pretty good babysitter. Just put your baby down in the snake, snake pit. He'll keep them safe. <laughs> or will you not put them down in the snake pit or let the serpent babysit your children? No, you would put them away. So the you abhor evil because the Lord does not prove and hates evil. These are the things, six things that the Lord hate. He, he does not like them. He uh, dislikes them severely to say hate. Yea, seven abomination. It's abomination. A proud look. Satan is prideful. So it's abomination. He's abomination of abominable being. He's prideful. A lying tongue. He's the father of lies. So one, two. So he's commits two abominations, hands that sheds innocent blood, three abominations Satan does, heart that divides wicked imaginations, three abominations that Satan does, feet that swift and running into mischief. So, four things that, four abominations that the Satan does, a false witness speaketh lies, uh, um, Six things, he that soweth discord among the brethren, he's the accuser of the brethren, nine day. So seven things that that uh, Satan does, seven abominations that, that he does, which is complete. He's a compendium evil. 
is everything that the Lord hates that Satan does. So we abhor evil because the Lord hates evil and he warns us that this is a deceiver. Do not uh, stay away from him. He's judged because he's the complete completeness in evil. So he says, well, well, we should love creation. Yeah, but we should love creation, his creation. We should have a love for it, but we should not love it, the creation above God. It says, who changed the truth of lie and worshiped the served the creature more than the creator? Or lost and stuff like that. That's, that's one thing you can apply. You serve the creature, the the, the creature, you, you, the flesh, or the creator, or the creature of the creation, though we're not to love creation above God. So he's, he's saying to love the cre creation. You know, yeah, we should love, you know, love what God created, but there's a lot of evil in that creation that because it's fallen, the world is fallen, there's a lot of evil in the world. So we should, we're told not to love the world, love what's the evil that's in the world. We're told to be separate from that evil. We not should love it. Everything that the, the world does, the lust of the eyes, the, uh, should we love pornos? You know, should we love love murder, murdering? Should we love pedo, uh, pedophilia? We should love his creation. No, we should not love his fallen creation. We should love his creation, his what he originally intended. So, um, anyways. We are poor evil. Satan is the epitome of evil. We are not told to be sympathized, to have sympathy for Satan, to forgive him because he will deceive you and draw you in. Line over eyes. It's what the really universal leads to. The apostasy is apostatized. It doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus or not. For your atonement, your salvation. Really don't. God will um wipe the slate clean after be all right. Doesn't doesn't really matter. In this age, well, I guess it matters. I don't know, really in the end it doesn't really does. You're told to submit to yourself to God, resist the devil, not have sympathy, not forgive him, resist, and he will flee from you. How forgiving is that when he will flee from you? You know, you want him to flee from you? I thought you were supposed to be forgiving. You want him to be, want him to like you. No, we are not, we should not want Satan to like us. Forgive him. We're supposed to resist. Rebuke the devil and his evil. To warn him off. To say, get lost. Get lost, Satan. Even Satan, it's even Jesus, I mean. When um, Peter said, and let it not be so that you are crucified. Because he did not see the things of God, the God's eternal redemptive plan. He didn't really know. He, he was like, really, I want you with me. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. So even Satan rebuked um, Michael, the archangel, said, the Lord will rebuke thee. You know, even him submit himself to God. Um, so we're not going to be like friendly to Satan. Really, if we'll forgive him. Uh, he isn't just a mixed up kid. He'll do better. <laughs> no, he won't do better. He, he's, he's seeking, he won, he's seeking those, uh, as many people to take with him. In Revelation, he took the thir third of the 
stars with his tail, or yeah, the third of the angels with him when he fell. No, he's. Uh, we are told to be sober, sober-minded, or barely alert, and vigilant, because your adversary. Oh, that, that's to call him the adversary. He's our enemy. I thought we were supposed to be forgiving the any, any universalist apostate said. Apostate. It's really apostate. Uh, Satan's just a mixed up kid. He, you know, you should be friendly. He's not your enemy. We should want him to repent and do right so we, we can be friends again. No, he's their enemy. He's looking as a roaring lion to gobble you up. That's his scan. That, that, that's his intent. That's his scheme. Satan is his, his scheme. He will not repent. He is prideful, proudful, and wants to devour you. Wait, walk about seeking whom he is devour. Don't let this lie saying, "Well, we forgive him because he is a mixed up kid. He'll do better once he says sorry. We can be friendly." No. Is our adversary? He's trying to devour you, trying to deceive you. Well, I'm not such a bad guy. I'm just misunderstood. I'm not such a bad guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just misunderstood. I just want friends. You, you could say, "Well, I just want friends," and I'm just like I, I'm, you know, like a toddler on a playground. I don't know how to make friends. So he acts out. Well, he's jealous because this next person has. Bunch of friends. I don't want friends. No, <laughs> he's not looking to have friends. He wants to bring them with him because he revenge. He's grind has a grudge against God that he really punished him. So he wants to take you along with him. Devour you. Deception. This is really deception. We're not supposed to uh, sympathize with Satan. We're supposed to submit to God. And um, drive out Satan. Satan will resist you. Lord rebuke thee. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. That's what you should be do. Because be, be vigilant. All the schemes, all the lies. We should be on guard. Because be wise to his um to to his uh, deceptions. Ephesians 6.10, put on a whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, schemes of the devil. Stand against him. Not to be sympathized, not to try to get him to repent so he can be friendly again. What an insane idea. We want to be friends with Satan. Just hope he does better. He just mixed up kid. So he'll repent someday, and we can be friends with him and have in God's kingdom once again. What an insane thought! That uh, one day he's just a mixed-up kid, and he'll repent and do better, and he will be welcomed in the kingdom of God. Really insane part, insane thought, <laughs> insane. We should just. Stand against the power of schemes of the devil. That the, the lie is the lie that he's not a, such a bad guy. He's just misunderstood. Rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Oh, such there, there. There's so much evil in the high places. So much evil. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor, of God, that ye be able to withstand that evil day. And having done all, all to stand, done all your might, all to stand, all your effort, all that you can do, with the help and power of God through the Holy Spirit, doing all that you can do, having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt with truth. So. This loins, this belt of truth, God's truth, surround yourself with God's truth, the only truth, nothing but the truth, so will help you, God, having right, right breastplate of righteousness.
God's imputed righteousness with the truth to protecting your heart, peace, health, preparation, the gospel of peace. Uh, you move forward, the good news. You move forward and spread the good news. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Faith shields you from that fiery darts of the wicked, of Satan. You take the home of salvation, salvation. Salvation is saved. You're regenerated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the, the salvation, shrouds you from this, know, the schemes. And the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Sword is, sword is a defensible, that's defense weapon. So with the word of God, you can fight against these lies. Uh, Satan's just not a, he's not a bad guy. Satan's just not a bad guy. It's just misunderstood. You can fight against that. I, I see it here. It says love Satan. Love evil. No, it says to hate evil. So, that's what it says here. That with prayer and supplication in the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, through with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, that to pray always to keep your faith strong and communicate with God. So, or we should forgive Satan. Oh, Satan's already judged. God's not going to forgive him. Not like Andy wants it to be that uh, that through the purifying fires of hell fires that after that he will be let go. What what does Scripture say that he will be let go? Let go. This kind of after the purifying fires of hell that they will be let go. All of this imprisonment, chains of darkness, they are be imprisonment. And after they're imprisoned, they're refer, reserved to the final judgment, be thrown in the lake of the lake of fire. So the the wicked, the angels are in change in prison, reserved the final judgment, be thrown in the lake of fire. There doesn't seem like no um kind of no uh I forgot to share this. So delivering the chains of darkness. Imprisoned. After that, reserve the final judgment. It doesn't look like they're let, being let out. So don't let the, these lies get to you. Uh, be strong. Keep communicating with God through prayer and the Holy Spirit. And uh, keep on reading His Word so you have something to fight it back against these lies. So stay strong in the Lord and. Uh, We'll see you next time. Thank you, Dave.